Good morning, 8th graders. Today is April 6th, 2020. Uh, on Friday, you took your Chapter 17 test. Uh, I'll have those uh, graded and posted uh, later today, Monday. I'll have those graded and posted. Make sure you check your grades, please, and, and make sure they're uh, accurate. I'm really getting tired of uh, some students pushing off doing assignments until three or four days later. I understand if you have internet issues, so uh, uh, th that's an excuse. But send me a quick email if you have reasons why you're not doing homework for three or four or five or six or ten days until after it's due. Get this test taken. If it's not taken, um, then I, I, we're moving on. It's going to be too late pretty soon. So uh, take care of your business. Check your grades. Uh, make sure everything is accurate. Today we're moving forward into chapter 18. Chapter 18 deals with reconstruction. Just like construction is to build something, reconstruction means we're going to be rebuilding. Think about all the things that have been destroyed in the war, you know, from uh, infrastructure like railroads and roads and bridges and, and towns, entire towns burned like Atlanta, um, uh, factories, uh, all those kinds of things, lives, uh, families. Um, what are we going to do with millions of uh, freed men now that there's no slavery uh, after the Civil War? Um, the relationships between families, the relationships between um North and South, uh, trade between other countries, all of those things have to be addressed. Uh, so we're going to take care of uh, Chapter 18 this week. Uh, this should be a four-day week. I believe we're still taking Friday off for a good Friday, uh, uh, I, I assume so at least. So today, uh, watch the video, and, and I should be able to have a Zoom at 1030 and at 1230. Um, I'll probably have to come to school to do that as I don't have very much internet at home. Hopefully next week they'll reset and get me some more high speed to get me through another week or two. Um, so that's the plan. Just to give you a picture, this is this week's lesson plan. So this is Monday. Uh, something called With Malice Toward None, Lincoln's Plan for Reconstruction. Before he's killed, he has a pretty solid plan. Uh, something called the Freedmen's Bureau, Johnson's Plan, and Black Codes. So... <clears throat> a lot of material to cover today, and I'm going to try to move as quickly as I can. On Tuesday, uh, the Congressional Plan for Reconstruction. We have three different plans for reconstruction. Lincoln's, Johnson. Johnson was Lincoln's vice president, so he becomes president when Lincoln gets assassinated. Uh, and then the Congress's plan, which was kind of radical or extreme. Um, so three different plans. Of course, Lincoln's isn't going anywhere because he's dead. Um so it leaves us with a combination of Johnson's plan and Congressional Reconstruction. And Congress doesn't like Johnson, so they try to impeach him. Um, and then we'll also on Tuesday talk about what daily life is like, especially in the South, for freedmen or blacks, which kind of touches on uh, Monday's lesson on the Freedmen's Bureau. On Wednesday, uh, the end of Reconstruction and protecting African American rights, the passage of the 15th Amendment, uh, giving blacks the right to vote, uh, a, a depression in the stock market, and a compromise to determine the president. So a lot of material this week. Uh, I'll try to keep it short and sweet. And then Monday, uh, a, a, just a quiz. We'll keep this one pretty short. Open note quiz. Excuse me, on Thursday, an open note quiz. And uh, a Zoom if necessary, 1030 or 1230. You guys are doing a great job. Keep up the good work. So I'm going to move into Chapter 18. Got to go all the way to the top. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and we'll start with reconstruction. It takes a long time, about 12 years, to clean up the mess. In fact, you might even say that some of the mess that was created as a result of the Civil War, we're still dealing with today when it comes to uh, racism and segregation. Not real segregation, but uh, segregation that does exist illegally uh, and, and issues like that, uh, equality amongst uh, people of different races and so forth. Uh, so we'll see what happens in that time period. Uh, now that the war is over, things we have to consider. How do we recover? You know, this was a war of brother versus brother, father versus son, uncle versus cousin. Uh, this was family against family. How do we recover from that? It's going to take a little bit more than a hug and a handshake probably to get over the hatred that existed. You know, if you're a union and uh, your son was killed by a Confederate, you have a lot of animosity and hatred towards the Confederacy and vice versa. Um, so where do we go from here? How do we put this behind us? You know, a lot of us, you and I, uh, all of us realize that one of the most difficult things to do is, is just issue a sincere apology 
and, and have it be received by the other as uh, sincere. So uh, those are the things we have to think about when it comes to reconstruction. We also look at this, uh, deaths to the male population. You know, disease deaths, of course, we see larger numbers of disease anytime there's warfare because people are in closer contact with each other, not practicing social distancing appropriately. Uh, and then the, the blue on here are the combat deaths. So if you look along here, you know, uh, states like New York, uh, 20,000 men just from combat, and then another almost 20,000 from disease. And Ohio and Pennsylvania paid huge prices. You might notice along here, there's no Nebraska. Well, Nebraska wasn't a state, but a lot of Nebraskans did serve. In fact, interestingly enough, most Nebraskans, almost all Nebraskans, uh, fought for the Union that fought. In fact, there was a significant percentage of the population that fought for the Union. Actually wore gray uniforms, so maybe the Nebraskans weren't very smart back then. Um, but uh, most of them fought under Iowa or, or even Ohio regiments, so they went... Uh, as far east as they could to find a regiment at Illinois, Indiana, but Iowa paid a pretty high price here too. So uh, a loss in our population. Wars tend to do that and upset the balance of male versus female. I guess it's good news for the boys because there's more girls for you to pick from. It's bad news for the women because uh, you just lost a significant percentage of the man in your uh, state. Okay, so before Lincoln dies, Lincoln's plan for Reconstruction was called With Malice Toward None, With Charity for All. I'm fairly certain we all know what charity is. You know, it's uh, when we, we pull money out of our pocket to help people that are less fortunate or that, that have a need. And we're all very charitable. Anytime there's a gum day or a hat day, you know, all of us are pretty good about throwing in. Or if your friend's house burns down, we raise money to help them restart. You know, that's charity. That's a... Uh, that's just being kind to each other. Malice, uh, if you've studied a little Spanish, uh, the, the root word there, mal, malice, means bad. So malice is like hatred, with malice toward none and charity for all. So Abraham Lincoln is going at this as, uh, I'm not going to punish the Confederacy that much, a little bit, but not that much. I want to treat the South with respect and allow Southern states to send representatives back to Congress and create their own state governments. Because immediately following the war, each Southern state is going to be uh, led by uh, Union generals. So they don't even have their own governors and their own state legislatures. They're pretty much controlled by the federal government in Washington uh, for a while. And, and that's what Lincoln's plan is to get rid of that as quickly as possible. With malice toward none. Uh, kind guy. He's going to pat him on the back and say, hey, it's over. Let's get this thing back together. Let's get it going right again. So in Lincoln's plan for Reconstruction, uh, he called for 10% of eligible Southern voters had to swear loyalty to the Union in order for them to create state legislatures and bring them back into the Union. 10%, one out of every 10, 10 out of every 100 men eligible to vote, which was men, had to swear loyalty. That was it. Now think about this. If it gets you back in, swearing loyalty is not that big of a deal. In fact, every morning, at least when we have school, um, we swear loyalty to the United States uh, when we do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. You know, the flag represents America. Allegiance is loyalty. So uh, Lincoln's plan is easy peasy for the Confederacy, but unfortunately, you know, the lead poisoning that he takes above his left ear uh, uh, sort of creates issues for his plan. He also wants to create something called the Freedmen's Bureau. Bureau. Kind of a funny spelled word, but it's a bureau. And, and we're going to talk more extensively about that. The idea was to create schools and hospitals uh, that would help former slaves. One of the biggest issues that the blacks that are now freedmen are going to have is their lack of education. As in most southern states, it was actually illegal to teach blacks to read and write. So uh, they come out of the Civil War as freed men, but they aren't equal. They don't have the same opportunities and abilities as uh, the average white man would have had. It's easy to take advantage of them, and Lincoln was looking to try to protect them as much as possible. What was the Freedmen's Bureau? Well, we got 4 million plus freed African Americans. Uh, that's about 10% of the population of the United States at the time. Uh, and the idea was to operate refugee camps. A refugee camp is for a person who doesn't know where to go and what to do, so they go there. 
uh, open up schools to teach not just the children, but the adults how to read and write, to manage hospitals, to provide health care, uh, to, to ration food and clothing. Make sure there's enough because there's going to be shortages for a while. Provide legal representation. This one's going to become a big deal, especially later on when we figure out how the southern economy is going to work. Assist with labor contracts and manage abandoned and confiscated land. So uh, th that's the purpose. And the Freedmen's Bureau, even though Lincoln is dead, is going to become a thing. So that's why uh, we're spending some time on it. I'm going to skip this video just because. Uh, this is Andrew Johnson. He takes over as president when Lincoln is assassinated. Johnson has a bit of an issue. Almost everybody, if they didn't like Abraham Lincoln, they respected his strength and his power and his authority. Uh, almost nobody liked Andrew Johnson. First of all, before the war broke out, he was a Southerner, so most Northerners, especially radical Northerners, didn't really trust the guy very much. He was born in North Carolina, and his plan was to offer amnesty to most Southern whites. So amnesty is a pardon. I forgive you. In fact, uh, of the people that asked Andrew Johnson for amnesty, some 90% were given amnesty, which means no punishment. All they had to do was pledge loyalty to the United States. Pretty easy. The, the biggest difference between Abraham Lincoln's plan for Reconstruction and Andrew Johnson's plan, he did not protect black rights. That's kind of the Southerner in him. He, he didn't love slavery, but he did not see blacks as equal to whites. So the Freedmen's Bureau is not going to be a thing under Andrew Johnson's plan for Reconstruction. And as a result of that, he doesn't make a lot of friends among abolitionists uh, or most radicals in the North who believe that blacks were maybe not equal equal, but uh, somewhat equal to whites. So um, Andrew Johnson, not a popular person, and as a result of that, we're going to see some funky things happen to him. In fact, uh, a, a student a few years ago pointed out that there was an uncanny resemblance between Andrew Johnson and the Oompa Loompa from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And I can see that. I don't know if Willy Wonka or whoever created that decided to use him as a, a model for the Oompa Loompas, but uh, he pretty much looks like one of them. Uh, southern states immediately began to pass, since they couldn't have slaves anymore, they immediately began to pass uh, laws called black codes. Uh, there were specific laws for blacks. Later, uh, we call them pig laws and Jim Crow laws, and they're going to last a long time. Uh, in some instances, almost a hundred years, and I'll go over some examples of those in, in a little bit. Uh, but just a few simple ones, for instance, you had to carry written proof of employment. So if you're a black man in the South, you had to have a job and proof that you have a job, which is kind of interesting because if you think about today, uh, nobody has to have proof of employment. You know, If you win the lottery, you don't have to work, which means you're unemployed, but you might be super rich. Or if you're old, you might be retired and you don't have to work, but you've got enough money. Couldn't meet in unsupervised groups, including churches without whites around, and you couldn't carry guns. So there wasn't equality in the law for blacks. So some examples of some black codes that were passed. I think these are kind of interesting. Uh, for the, and, and these aren't necessarily 1860s, 1870s. This is 1880s to the 1960s. There were some forms of Jim Crow or black codes. I'm just going to walk through a couple that are kind of interesting to me. And maybe during our Zoom I can go through some more. Here's one in, in Alabama. There are different laws in every state. Uh, there was no, uh, for nurses, no person or corporation shall require a white female nurse to nurse in wards or rooms in hospitals uh, in which a Negro men are placed. So nurses did not have to nurse black men. Uh, in restaurants, it is unlawful to conduct a restaurant or other place for serving of food in the city at which white and colored people are served in the same room unless such white and colored persons are effectually separated by a solid partition extending from the war, the, the floor upwards to a distance of seven feet. So uh, separation of the blacks and whites, call that segregation. How about this? In pool or billiard rooms, you know, playing pool like uh, pool, uh, it shall be unlawful for a Negro and a white person to play together or in the company of the other 
at any game or billiards rooms in Alabama. In Arizona, the marriage of a person of Caucasian, white, blood with a Negro, Mongolian, Malay, or Hindu shall be null and void. In Florida, uh, any Negro man and white woman or white man and Negro woman are not who are not married to each other, uh, who shall habitually live in and occupy the same uh, room, shall be punished by imprisonment. Um, let's see if I can find a couple more that I think are sort of standoutish. There's l literally hundreds of these. <clears throat> um, a burial. Any colored person upon ground set apart or used by the burial of white persons shall not be allowed. So whites and blacks had to be separated even in death. Um, amateur baseball they had to have separate baseball teams, which during World War II, the Negro League baseball really explodes because a lot of whites in the 1940s were sent off to war. Um, things about circus tickets being segregated. Uh, um, I'm just walking through. Uh, textbooks. Books shall not be interchangeable between white and colored schools, but shall continue to be used by the race first using them. It's almost like people believed you could catch black, like it was some sort of a disease that would kill you. Um, in Oklahoma, any teacher who shall teach in any school, college, or institution where members of the white and colored race are received and enrolled as pupils for instruction shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor uh, and upon conviction shall be fined a sum of not less than $10. So you're not allowed to teach whites and blacks together. Fishing, boating, and bathing in Oklahoma. The Conservation Commission shall have the right to make segregation of the white and colored races uh, as to the exercise of rights of fishing, boating, and bathing. Holy moly. This is crazy. Um, lunch counters. No persons, firms, or corporations in South Carolina shall furnish me meals to passengers or station restaurants uh, eating at the same time in the same place. Um, theaters, the same thing. So everything was about segregation and, and disallowing whites and blacks to have equality, especially in southern states, but not limited to southern states. Maybe during our Zoom we can talk about what some of the Jim Crows are, or uh, black codes look like even in the north. And uh, that gets us to Congressional Reconstruction, which is a, a little bit further than what I actually wanted to go today. Let's see if this video really quick works, and then we'll call it quits for today. Black laborers who insisted on better wages and working conditions were regularly met with threats and violence. Vigilantes lynched whole families and used the bullwhip on men and women, as they had in slavery days. In 1865, more than 2,000 black men, women, and children were reported murdered in Louisiana alone. The violence in the South was a way to reestablish white supremacy. These gangs of whites pick out, the guy is trying to save his money, he's trying to get ahead. A man who is an inspiration to other black people in the community. He's the one that gets murdered. It amounts to systematic culling of alpha males from the black community. The Southern legal system became an instrument of intimidation. Louisiana, Texas, South Carolina, Mississippi, and Florida passed laws that virtually prohibited freedmen from any work except as field hands. The laws were called Black Codes. The aim was slavery without the chain. Black codes were laws passed to control and restrict and constrain the lives of the freed people, essentially rendering them bondsmen again under law. Some states made it illegal for freedmen to handle weapons and restricted them from buying or renting land. 
black children could be seized from poor families and forced to work in the fields. If a black man had no job, he could be jailed and auctioned to a planter for his labor. They make a travesty of the freedom that African Americans have acquired. They are so far from any notion of fairness or freedom that even Northerners who are not egalitarians say these laws are unacceptable. And so Northern Republicans are faced with a dilemma. They don't want to have a big fight with the president. But to accept the idea that Johnson's policy is a success and accept the black codes, they feel means giving up the victory in the Civil War. To Louisiana's black veterans, one freedman offered this advice. I would say to every colored soldier, bring your gun home. So you get the idea from that video that even though slavery doesn't exist, the 13th Amendment ends slavery and the 14th Amendment makes black citizens and the 15th Amendment provides them with the right to vote, those equalities do not exist, especially in parts of the South uh, and, and maybe even some parts of the North. So we'll continue that discussion later. Um, that's all for today. Have a great day. Uh, enjoy. Uh, uh, your afternoon. Uh, we'll see you at Zoom today, if possible, 1030 or 1230. And uh, we'll go from there. Happy Monday.